Watching the sunset, the red and pink and gold, the weaving of an intricate tapestry. Standing by the river's edge, where the blue green waters flow down from the mountains to the sea. Through the purity of winter, the summer's deep blue cloudless skies, through the flaming kaleidoscope of fall, to spring's gentle sweet rebirth, you wondrous stands before my eyes, and I am lost. Fulfilled in the designated place, your son's death redeemed us from the fall. Through the wonders of your love and the riches of your grace, I am lost in the wonder of it all. What is man that you're mindful of? Son of man, that you visit him. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Was man that you're mindful of him? The Son of man, that you visit him. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all. Time travel to 20 year old Ken. Standing on a mountain top, chill breeze blowing through my hair, gazing on the beauty of your earth. Pine tree grows, the glistening lakes, the yellow fields, of prairie grass. I'm reflecting on the joy of this second birth. Lone figure lined against the sky, and all you live inside of me. 
causes me to stand up straight and tall. As your awesome love washes over me, like a mighty ocean wave, I am still lost in wonder of it all. And I kind of am still lost in wonder of it all. I just lost the need to create a middleman to project it through. But 20 year old Ken, he wrote a lot of songs. Hey, Mark. Good morning. You may be seated. Welcome to Trailer Boy Trip. This is where I tell stories and sing songs from yesteryear. I don't. Uh, uh, I started out as a Southern Baptist gospel singer, songwriter, preacher. As a young fellow, like preached my first sermon in what had formerly been a brothel in a nearly deserted mining town in a tiny corner of the Cascade foothills in Washington. Uh, preached my first sermon, 18 years old, wearing a J.C. Penney three-piece polyester suit. Very uh, kind of a hillbilly fundamentalist Baptist church. That started it. I'd already picked up the guitar. I'd been a pretty shy kid. But I had this whole sense of call that told me that I gotta get up and do stuff, so. So I started learning songs, and I started writing songs, I started writing sermons, and reading sermons, and listening to sermons. Oh my, it was like, it was kind of like being a writer, except that I was, uh, I was doing a different, my creativity was pointing in a different direction. I was hanging out with all the people wanting to do the same thing. <coughs> anyway, but, and of course I've changed a great deal since then. I would praise you in the morning when the sky is cold and gray. I praise you as I plod along through another long, hard day. Praise you in the evening when that long hard day is done. Then I praise you in my dreams till the rising of the sun. Oh, I will praise you, Lord. Also, 1988, I think. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will. Eventually I had you, Lord. enough songs written and while I was in the army, hanging out in the street corners singing, writing songs in the shower room when nobody was around because of the tile. Eventually got enough of these. And then in fall of 1988, I did my very first Christian concert at Calvary Baptist Church in Burlington, Washington. And uh, I was a youth minister at the time. I'd just gotten home from the army. And it was my first my first show, weirdly enough. I have it on cassette. Uh, and oh my, I had forgotten that I had opened it with a rap. I had had, uh, I had a, a very amazing army experience. Um, they, I had shown up with a big Bible under my arm, and they threw me into a room full of Midwestern boys, uh, a whole bunch of skinny white kids like me, and uh, oh my God, they hated me. Hey, Ed, um, I'm telling stories. I showed up in the army, so this is just outside Stuttgart, Germany in 1986. I show up, this great big King James Bible under my arm, um, and I... I uh, they didn't know what to do with me. I wasn't even wearing, I was wearing a uniform. I think I was wearing a suit. Um, they thought I was like an officer or something. It was a powder blue. It was a powder blue sports coat. And, uh, cause I had dodged, uh, you know, I dodged all the normal ways of things. Cause I jumped from the Navy to the army. And anyway, uh, so I show up, they throw me in this room, this full of white boys and they hated me. Oh, well, cause I was a self-righteous prick. I mean, face it. I was, I was preaching and, and pray, get down on my knees and pray out loud for my roommates. Right. I mean, I was that kind of hardcore. 
and the captain um, of the company that I was assigned to and my sergeant of my platoon sergeant, they were black guys and they were older black guys. And they decided that to keep me alive and not have my ass beat, they swapped me out and they put me in with all black kids. And um, it was amazing. I have pictures. It was great. Um, we lived together for like two years, almost two years. And, and so, um, and so of course I learned to rap. I was pretty quick on my toes and good with words. And so me and my, my, uh, <clears throat> the guy I worked with, John Lee, he was also my roommate. And, uh, we called ourselves night and day. I have, I have pictures, I have pictures of us posing as night and day, the illy boys. And um, we used to do the, the end of the day rap on Friday and we'd get going and we'd have people doing the beatbox and it was great. It was a lot of fun. So, of course, the first song on my very first, my very first show, very first concert I ever did, I'm 20 years old, 1988. And I didn't remember this until I found the cassette in my box of things. Um, it was a rap song. I was up there, white boy doing a rap song with a Casio uh, doing the beat thing. And I was doing a rap that I'd written called When the Devil Says Yes, You Just Say No. And um, <laughs> so anyway, at some point I have to listen to the rest of the tape. I, I uh, When I started it, I was like, what is this? I thought this was my show. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's me. So I had a moment there. But anyway, I, um, you know, I still worship. Right? I still worship. I just don't, you don't have to have, it's like, you know, you can be grateful without having the need to thank anybody. And you can be, you can live a life of reverence for life. Um, to, I mean, life is a, it's an interesting dance, but I, um, you know, I do kind of a new, my new gospel, right? <laughs> Be here now. Stand with me. Place your hand with mine upon the bark of this redwood tree. Take a breath. Let it go. That space between holds all the peace you ever need. Follow the quiet feeling down And darlings, be here now Be here now Lay On this blanket in the wind while it whispers to the sea, hold my hand. Look toward home when you meet my eyes like that. Don't you know you need my soul? Follow the heartbeat pounding down, and darling. When the storm clouds fill your eyes and they overtake your smile, I know that you realize, oh, in just a little while, every single question ever asked about the why or how is simply answered. Harvest moon is rising Yonder past that old oak tree So stand and shout Sing and dance Life's a part when you're alive Every now is another chance Follow those freedom feelings 
favorite souls we really have to figure out a way to meet up we really do you're on the wrong portland man we gotta figure something out you are uh well you're a gem i have a feeling that if we got out of if i had the secret capacity to dig the hearts and minds of all the people that you know that there are a lot of them that you have really helped so, I appreciate what you do in the world. We are the vessels that long to be filled with the waters of life, but we often won't yield. We settle for drops when the spirits out. Dig out the wells, oh Lord. Dig out the wells, crush every stone that stops up the flow of your spirit. That we might be filled with the abundance of life that we yearn for, though still we fear. For to be fully yours is too awesome to grasp our hearts with your life. Flowing. To know you the way you have known us, to live in the light of that knowing. 1989, I wrote it for Jim Ingram. It was a sermon. He was the first person to ever ask me. And he was like, I'm going to preach on this passage in Genesis. I wondered if you could work up a song for it. And I was like, I sure could. Later in life, it ended up being that when editors, uh, my favorite thing ever is when somebody says, hey, I need a short story about, and then my job is to find that story and land it. And I love doing that. That's what gets me excited. It's a dance, right? Um, used to be that just telling stories got me excited. Writing all the time, writing stories, all submitting all of that. I, that went away. Um, I was very, I'm very happy with my body of work so far. If I added nothing more to it, I'd be okay. Um, but the fact that I can and do feels really good. And so I take on assignments. Any editor that comes and says, I want a Ken Skull story, I'll find something in my inventory or I'll write them something if I can. That's, that's my, that's my go-to. But the same was true of these, uh, songs at one point. And I have a several that I wrote where I was asked to write them and some of the best songs um, see, yeah, right? It's fun. It's like a hunt, right? There's this thing about, I've got this fish. I'm going after it. Um, but so I love this song. I also love this song because, again, you know, I've just taken out the middleman. I'm an agnostic atheist through and through. I don't know and I don't believe. I think everything I've heard about so far, the most realistic of all of them is the flying spaghetti monster. Um, and that uh, all of the gods uh, behave like us, way like us. And it seems uh, more reasonable to believe that they were created in our image. Um, and so that's the, that's the sum of my journey. And I'm good with, I think there are things we just don't know yet. But I also think that it's not going to be any of the things people have been trying to convince us of all this time, uh, including me. I mean, I am the boy who took his personal testimony, painstakingly handwritten out a dozen times, along with several gospel tracts, uh, especially the Chick comic book gospel tracts that depicted people burning in hell. Uh, and I crammed them into soda pop bottles and I threw them into the Pacific Ocean uh, after I graduated from high school uh, because I'd had an argument with a girl, uh, an atheist girl, who told me that God 
she didn't believe that there was any kind of God that would, you know, send people to hell who were on desert islands who'd never heard. I was like, ah, ah, there's a way. So I took I took it all pretty seriously. But uh, but this song also talks about getting rid of things that get in the way of us loving ourselves. If you really think about the the end result, because this whole the whole religion jam thing was all about people feeling better, right? Getting peace in their hearts, getting being loving and kind and all I mean, for the most part. I mean, there were some religions that were really just about the gods are angry, throw a virgin in a volcano. You know, not, not all of them were, you know, they tried to evolve, I think, at some point. But religion is a human tool that can be useful, I think, sometimes. But the things that we... Uh, our epistemology matters. I totally want to design. I need to talk to Joseph. I think Joseph and I need to, to market together an epistemology matters t-shirt. But anyway, but you know, we, we, I'm going to take this, not my voice is a little strained, so I'm going to take bring it down here to, uh, bring it down here to a lower note. We are the vessels that long to be filled with the waters of living. Oh Lord, help us yield. Believing we pray for the Spirit out. Dig out the wells, oh Lord, dig out the wells, crush every stone that stops up the flow of your spirit, that we might be filled with the abundance of the life that we are for, though still we fear it. For to be fully yours is too awesome to grasp our hearts with your life overflowing, to know you. sound at all like the Bible Belt to me, folks. And the greatest gifts God ever gives are wrapped in flesh and bone and live and love amongst us so we know we're not alone. His present risen power prods us on to play the part to be the hands and hugs of Abba's heart. I wrote this for the pastor who mentored me when he took a church in Topeka and was leaving the area. He's back now. He's up in Spanaway. He's getting older and older all the time. But and he hates that I left the ministry, of course, and left the faith, all of that. But we still get together once in a while. We still talk. I love that man. He introduced me to Lao Tzu. I mean, not literally, because... Yeah. We're led into and out of lives like leaves upon the wind with hands to help and hugs to hold a world that needs a friend through him we are a kind word spoken poured out wine and bread that's broken to satisfy the hunger of the soul and along the way we have this hope to love and learn and live Amongst a family of faith, the friends our Father gives. The tapestry of lives he weaves out of the many who believe becomes one body, beautiful and whole. Interestingly enough, that makes me think of America. Not in a God way, but that whole idea that of being a body, right? They refer to the church in the Bible as the body and all this with you no know, the head of the body for America is the Constitution. 
And uh, it's um, our goal, I think, to become one body, beautiful and whole. It's a blended body of so many different thoughts and feelings and beliefs and peoples. But it's one body, beautiful and whole. Um, anyway, a little divergence there. The greatest gifts God ever gives are wrapped in flesh and bone and live in love amongst us so we know we're not alone. His present risen power prods us on to play the part to be the hands and hugs of Abba's heart. The song's just saying, be kind, be kind, be kind. Just love, just love, just love. I could just sing that over and over again. Be kind, be kind, just love, just love. Be kind, be kind, just love. Abba's heart is big enough to hold us all. Abba's grace is great enough to catch us when we fall. Abba's son is called himself our brother. And in this lavish love, he lets us love one another. Greatest gifts God ever gives are wrapped in flesh and bone and live in love amongst us so we know we're not alone. His present risen power prods us on to play the part to be the hands and the hugs of Abba's heart. You are the hands and hugs of Abba's heart. Be kind, go out and love. Oh, you did it in the current voice. Be kind, be kind, go out and love. So, let's see, that was 1992 or 3, 4, maybe 94 when I wrote that. And already at that point, there'd been this softening. My original kind of faith was pretty crunchy, pretty hardcore, right? Gospel tracks in the ocean and shit. Tracks full of hellfire. You're gonna die. Um, and then I was softening up to this whole notion of this kind of, I was transitioning into more loving. I mean, and this is about the time that I was confronting an elderly alcoholic racist in our church that was making racist slurs in our church in regards to the Korean congregation that we were sharing our building with. I had negotiated a partnership with another small church that needed a home. They were a Baptist Korean church. And they used our building. Hey, Tom Howard. I was talking about the Army days like this a bit ago. Yeah, it's good to see you here. Um, and uh, and so I, this is at a time, 94, when Jim was going back to Topeka uh, I had just gotten done having to remove somebody from my congregation because of the things he was saying and, and threatening. He's made some threats against me once I wasn't down with his racist banter. Um, and so, morning, man. Good to see you, buddy. This is my old roommate from the, the Army. He came in. He came in when I was on my way out. So we were... And he was the only other kid to show up with a Bible under his arm. So we got on famous, me and Tom. Of course, he was Church of Christ, not a Southern Baptist. And, well, that's like, well, now we know it's just like peanut butter and jelly. But back then it was like, well, I don't know about this. But, <laughs> well, what am I going to do next? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not long. I'm not going to be doing much more here. I've been here for a bit already. So... Well, you know what I'm going to do? Because it's Holy Month. I mean, it's Holy Month all month. But the 12th of October is Paul Simon's birthday. And he, of course, is my favorite singer-songwriter. So I'm going to do a Paul Simon song to close us out. Who 
darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because the vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains and in the sound the silence in restless dreams I walk alone near the streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a street lamp, I turn my collar to the cold and damp. When my eyes were stabbed by the flashing of neon light, it split the night and touched the sound of silence. In that naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more People talking without speaking People hearing without listening People writing songs That voices never share said I do not know silence like a cancer grows hear my words that I might teach you take my arms that I might reach out to you oh And the words of the prophets They're written on the trailer walls And the tenement halls And whispered in the sounds Of silence Alright y'all, have a good morning I'm gonna go make some coffee and get this day going